The next uh, comedian I want to bring out, I'm very excited about. Uh, her boyfriend is here, Rocco. Just got out of jail. Let's hear from fucking Rocco. That's right, just out. Her name, as she's from Staten Island, very funny woman. Give it up for <laughs> Leslie fucking Miller! Oh, right. <laughs> Here she comes. Give it up. Yeah, Leslie. Hey, what's up, girl? How are you? Look at Rocky Boy today. My hair is kind of big, so I'm pretty happy. It's really dark, and I don't know you fuckers are going to steal from me. Um, I'm from Staten Island. I'm 24. You're right. I'm 34, and um, born again Christian. I have Tourette's syndrome. I have insomnia. I don't sleep for days right now. How long are we up for today? I think today is like two or three days. He works like 10 jobs. He's like a Mexican, but he's amazing. Actually, I just said he's a Mexican because that's what Satan, my girlfriend that came last week, and she was here. She, um, I call her Satan because she's actually, she's evil. And um, so I'm um, born again Christian. I have Tourette's syndrome. I was singing in the choir at 12 o'clock um, on Sundays. And I'm bipolar, I'm bisexual. Well, I was bisexual until Rocky Mignani came in my life. Now I'm Rocky Mignani's pussy, so I don't uh, go with girls anymore, which I would like, but she's messed, these, messed up my uh, career with women, but that's okay. I love him. He's actually, uh, everybody here knows his name more than me. They know my name because I'm always talking about Rocky Mignani. He was away, um, you know, at work. That's what I told everybody, but he wasn't really at work. He was right because. And uh, so I, uh, the R Rikers always makes you think about underwear because I really don't wear underwear. But when you go to Rikers, you have to wear underwear because they strip search you and they go through your underwear and they go, they stick your hand in, the, in your pants and they go through your underwear. And this lady, she's like pregnant over here, pregnant over there, like really fat lady. She's all <laughs> fucked up. She's the most miserable. See you next Tuesday. I've met in my life. I get scared and anxious every time I go. To, every time I went to go see her, which was like once or twice a week. And uh, the lights up here kill me. They're so bright. And um, yeah, so I would get in this crowd really sucks. Is everybody sleeping? Is there anybody else left here? It's only just comics. Well, that's okay. But um, yeah, I just met some really good, Jordan was awesome. The little Asian girl, it was like, and she was like, they always talk about my family. And she was like, oh, who's your daddy? Who's your daddy? Who's your daddy? I like just told this girl my life story. Now her best friends are thinking more in Japan tomorrow with her. And uh, that's how I meet people. Like today, I went from like, Walking Rocky to the bus stop at 5.20 in the morning because he had to go to work in Queens and take the express bus to the trains or airplanes. He goes to work every day, all day, and then I can't wait to see him at night. And I, I'm not really working during the day anymore. I have like 10 jobs, but they're not like real jobs. I was like dog walking, um, I do massage therapy, I do emotional, I'm an emotional psychic, I do all this other bullshit. And he goes to work all day. And, um, and, uh, wait a minute, like, so anyway, if, if, as you can tell, I have ADHD to like the fucking seventh power because I'm all over the place. But I wrote like a million notes down because there's only 10 minutes to say. So when I was little, I started working at um, a club in the city called The Tunnel. And I was 16 years old and I started bartending before I did stand-up comedy with Dave Chappelle when I was like 19, I think 18, 19, I started doing that at the Comedy Cellar. And um, I was really, really skinny. I was a model and um, you know, I started working there and, uh, you know, so doing drugs was like part of my job. You know, bartending and doing drugs was like part of my job. Like, you hear that? That's that's not from not doing, you know, like I hate cocaine, but I love the way it smelled. You know, I hate, I, I love, I loved ketamine. Ketamine was my drug of choice. I used to have like, my, my jaw, like I used to, when I was on ketamine, I was normal. Like if I was on K right now, you guys would think like I was completely normal. When, I, when I'm when i not on it, like I'm, I'm bipolar, so I take lithium, I take lamictal, what are they maybe? I'm on like five, oh, like PS, that fucking alarm just went off, I'm supposed to take my meds, so that's what's going on right now. Uh, and I'm like in and out of the psych wards, but I go to the psych wards because I'm obsessed with schizophrenic people. They all, they talk to the dead. So when I go there, I usually bring, oh, where is my dad? I know this is gonna freak you out, whatever. I bring my dad's ashes with me to the psych ward, and I'm always like, they hear voices and stuff, they talk to dead people. So I'm always like, he talks to my dad? And like, my mom's like, you have to, you have, you're obsessed with schizophrenic people, you have to leave them alone. Like, they hear voices. We all fucking hear voices. When you go in the mirror, don't you hear like, my tits look too big, I'm too fat, I mean, I'm pregnant right now, so, oh yeah, P.S., I'm pregnant. Oh. And uh, so, you know, I, like, you hear voices, like, I look fat, I, my boobs are too big, I shouldn't really, we all hear fucking voices. They give me the fucking medicine, now I stop hearing voices. So it's like, I, I go to the psych ward to get, like, my, my uh, medication, like, adjusted, and it's like, when I'm not on medicine, I'm so much better, but now I'm on medicine, I'm like the micro machine man, I talk 100 miles an hour. This is a right, Rocky, when I wake up in the morning, do I sound exactly like this? 
He's like, babe, can I fucking be first? Like, give me a second here. I'm like, I'm gonna make coffee, I'm gonna walk you to work, I'm gonna go this, you're gonna go from work, we're gonna do that. Like, I write like a million, so my, uh, I used to have a lot of drag queens come over my house, rock and roll, my dad. So, um, I go, I, um, I worked a lot of clubs, so a lot of my friends were a lot of with drag queens growing up. My, my mother was like, you know, from Ohio. She never ever wanted to admit that I was like doing drugs. So, she, like, she told herself, I would, I would come home, like, I would go to work on Friday in a tunnel, and I would come home from Sound Factory or Palladium on Sunday afternoon, like four in the afternoon, I would bring the whole club home with me, with the drag queens and everybody, and we would cook the K in the microwave. And my brother was a cop at the time, and he used to lick his finger, go like this to the microwave, and we used to tell my mother we were making French toast with powdered sugar, because we were like, yeah, we're just go making powdered sugar. And you know, we're all walking around the background like this, this drag, and I got K all over my nose, so I'm like 18 years old, 19 years old, and my mother loved it because I was coming home with $600 every weekend, so she didn't really care. And uh, my brother looks at me, my brother's a cop, he's all in his cop uniform, my brother's the biggest dick ever. And he, he's standing there holding his gun, and he was like, Mom, put this in your mouth. She's like, it's powdered sugar, I don't want to put it in my mouth. He goes, it's fucking ketamine. My mother goes, what's that? She goes, he goes, special K. She goes, so she's eating cereal? I'm like, oh my God. My mother, I was like, yeah, I'm in the background. I'm like, yeah, I'm looking at my brother, I'm like, ah, like I'm laughing at him because he, my mother really thinks it's special K. And that is fucking cereal, meanwhile it's not, it's drugs. And he, uh, and my my mother's like my brother. My mother's like she just drank Coors Lights and was doing shots of tequila all night. My brother goes, she's been out for three days. There's fucking drag queens in the pool, ma. Like wake up, you know. Like my mother just didn't. She just didn't get it. And that's okay because if I had a choice, I would do all the drugs all over again because I had such a such a good time. And um, I. Uh, you know, I feel like now what I do is I'm in, um, I'm an Alcoholics Anonymous for 12 years, and um, I've been sober mostly until fucking Molly came out of the bitch. Molly got me and Molly. <laughs> fucking Molly. We weren't drinking, so we told ourselves like we don't have to tell our sponsors in AA because we're only doing fucking Molly's, $200 a day. I never had an orgasm since I was 32 years old because Rocky Mignani, That's why he's my fucking gonna be my husband. I had sex with like. A oh, few guys, and nobody ever, you know, doo -doo, you know, I can make myself come a hundred times in the shower, but I was always thinking, I was always like, yeah, that was all fucked up. I thought I, yeah, I'm coming. I wasn't coming anywhere. Like it was like, whoosh, it was like all over the floor on Halloween. We did three mollies each. We were bugging our faces off, and he was like, I thought I peed. He's like, no, baby, you didn't pee. You came. I, my mother lives in California, so she's three hours difference. It was three o'clock in the morning. I'm on the phone. He's outside smoking a cigarette, like yeah, just like all excited. And I'm, and he's there. They knocks on the door. Open his lips. Tell me you're not on the phone with your mother. I'm like, Ma, my jaws are eyes. I'm like, Ma, I just came three times. Old. My mother's like, I was like, My pussy's not broken. My mother goes, Jesus Christ, Leslie, I'm your mother. Like, you can't be telling me this shit. It's crazy. But I think it's funny. I call my mother for everything. She's my best friend in the whole entire world. And, uh, so I got one last joke to go out with uh, on Rikers. They're like all the, I was always with like all these black girls on the bus. I was the only one without a kid. When they had to go to the bathroom, they're throwing their babies at me. They're like, hold the baby, hold the baby. I'm doing fingerprints. I'm getting strip search. I'm going crazy. I'm like, these bitches on the bus, they'll fuck 30 niggas without a condom. Mm -hmm. And then, but then they're scared of thunder and lightning. <laughs> it's being quiet.